What's going on? Yes, Cody here back with a new video. Going to be reviewing Resident Evil, the final chapter today. I did go see it last night, and we need to talk about this movie. This movie was terrible. I know I've seen a lot of people say that, and I was really hoping that it wouldn't be that bad. Um, I don't know why, because all the other ones have been pretty horrible. But it was. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to watch the trailer, and we're going to talk about it as the trailer goes. So... Alright, so I want to talk about this right here. This um, explosion that she did to kill the the dragon looking thing. I don't know what they're called. Um, this was from a like landmine. Which I don't think is going to go off like a nuke like that. Like just stuff like that. Like stuff that doesn't make sense that could actually happen they did in this movie basically. So let's jump into something else. <coughs> So let's talk about this. This is the Red Queen, if everyone doesn't remember the Red Queen. She is the reason the first one in the Hive, the Hive got uh, quarantined, I guess you could say, and got shut down was because of her because she didn't want the infection to get out. Now in this, the Red Queen is someone else. Um, let's go back to Resident Evil Apocalypse. So if you go down to cast, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, what was her name? I don't remember. Here we go. Angie Ashford. Alright, that was who the Red Queen was model after in the original one. Can I click on this and it come up with stuff about her? Yeah. This girl right here, that's who the Red Queen was based off of in the first couple movies, right? Well, if you go here, and we scroll down, um, it's, it's this chick. Let's see, is it going to pull it up? Yeah, see, there's a lot of weird, it's hard to explain, so they really fucked up the story in this, alright? So, in this one, the the reason the virus got out was because of just this, uh, this girl, Alicia, Elisa, whatever, um, had a disorder, so her father wanted to help find a way to, basically what it was is she aged faster than what she should, so she was going to die, like when she was 20, she looked like she was 90, so she was going to die, alright? That's fine, whatever. But the problem with that is that in Apocalypse, before that, this was why the, the virus was created. It was because of this chick. Her father created it to save her because she had a different, I don't remember what the disease was, but she also had a disease. So her father made the cure to save her. And this was Angie Ashford. Ashford. But in this one, it's not the case. So they completely ignored the second movie and how the virus was started and who the Red Queen was based off of and stuff like that. So in this one it was based off this girl which was young Alicia and the Red Queen. So can I pull up a picture of just her? Yeah, see? This is who it was based off in this one. This is who the virus started because of. Which, so they completely ignored anything that happened in the first movie and Apocalypse. Which is very weird because at the first of the movie they actually have like a recap and showing all these movies and what happened in those movies leading up to this point. So they just completely ignored some of that shit. <coughs> yeah, and there's another thing. Alright, so the whole point of this movie was the Red Queen randomly contacts her and lets her know that there is a airborne cure for the T-Virus. Now not only did she wait till apparently there's only 4,000 people left, but she waited until somehow she can predict that there's 48 hours left before the rest of the people in the world will, be, will die. I think the Red Queen said there's like 4,000 people left. And she's calculated down to 48 hours before the rest of the people will be wiped off the face of the earth. Very ironic, but alright. Alright, so now this scene, <laughs> this this was awesome, like I'm not going to lie, this was awesome movie. Basically what it was, is there's a horde of zombies coming behind those trucks that are being controlled by people from Umbrella. So this is barrels of gasoline they have poured down 
on all these zombies hoping to destroy them all. Now granted, the scene looked awesome, don't get me wrong, but the CGI is just horrible. Like, look at this big mob of zombies. It makes no fucking sense. Like, I guess they lost all their budget for this movie after the other ones failed so bad. That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, another thing I want to know is, so with this big horde, let's fast forward a little bit. So there's Isaac, the doctor that started all this, basically. So there's this big horde of zombies, right, that they're following by. They got, what they did is they got people handcuffed to the back of these trucks. They're having to run, so the zombies are attracted to them. But there's no zombies in this area until they get there. Why? Where's, where the fuck's all the zombies go? Do you think, did they kill them all? Like, it's just, there's no explanation to how this movie ended the way, or started the way it was. So, um, at the end of... What was the fifth one called? I don't remember what it's called. Retribution. You end with um, Alice getting the, the T-Virus injected her again by Wesker. Saying, you know, he needs her again. Um, this is the last stand for humanity or whatever. So you got Wesker, Leon, Valentine, and I can't think of, remember the Asian girl's name right now. All of them on top of the lighthouse, you know, ending an epic scene. It doesn't even, this movie doesn't even start like that. There's no explanation to what happens at the end of that The the end of that movie to this one. Leon, apparently, Leon and Vanta, I guess, are dead. It doesn't say what happens to them. The only thing you hear is that Wesker betrayed Alice and didn't actually inject her with the T-Virus, so she doesn't have the T-Virus in this. Or the powers of the T-Virus, I guess you could say. But it didn't say what he did, or where the other people went, or if he killed them, or what. It doesn't say anything about that, so it just literally ignores the end of that movie. So, let's see, hold on, give me a second. Alright, so here's here's another thing I need to talk about. So, I don't even know how to explain it. Let's see if I can find that image. Alright, so right here you got this big gate area that's reading to, leading into the hive. Now, I do want to point out that... Uh, Wesker is a complete and total bitch in this movie. I don't know why. In the last couple of movies, he was more, he was a lot better. He was like a boss battle type fight in the other movies. But in this one, he is a complete bitch. His sole purpose is to sit in the hive and watch as Alice comes in. Now, he tells the Red Queen, you know, to uh, bring up all the, you know, the special defenses and all that stuff. And that's all he does. And they repeat that same scene like three different times. Like he says it three different times. It's probably the same scene, just in a different part of the movie. So as he's watching Alice come in. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little sick right now. Um, this big gate right here is just open. So, you know, he could have just shut it. And there had been no problem whatsoever. And some people are saying, because see, basically the Red Queen is helping Alice. But she can't do anything um, real else because she cannot... Her harm a hive and hive, a umbrella employee, and she cannot turn against them. So whatever any of the uh, umbrella tell him, tell her to do, she has to do it. So like right here, people are saying, well, maybe she just kept the door open for Alice. No, because she gave over manual, uh, manual control to Wesker to control the stuff in the building. So he left this open. Now, if he left it open because he just he wanted to see her squirm you know kind of fight for it but not get it I don't know but it's just kind of silly I mean it's supposed to be like one of the most defensive places in the world and the main gate is just open
Alright, so there's a few things I gotta talk about in this. Um, to the end of the movie. So, uh, you get to the end of the movie, they've all they've made it to the bottom of the hive, to where the, the anti-cure, whatever, the airborne cure is at. So they get down there and they find out that this Isaac, right, where'd he go, where'd he go? Uh, I don't know where the hell he's at. Uh, this Isaac is not the real Isaac. This is a clone. When they get down there, they find out that Wesker had uh, the real Isaac cryogenically frozen. So he brings him back to life. And ba what you find out at the end is... <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> you find out at the end of this movie that the Umbrella's plan for all of this, the T-Virus, was basically to genocide the world like the Bible and kill everyone off except for uh, rich and powerful people. So these rich and powerful people, they had them cryogenically frozen inside the hive. Now, you know, whatever, that's alright, but if you remember in the second one, they nuke Raccoon City. Umbrella does. So why would they nuke the city taking a chance of all these powerful people be dead? So they don't really coordinate with the other movies. Like, something that happened in 2 might not even happened in this one, or if it did, they just ignore it. But, so you find out he's, this isn't the right one. Find out the other Isaac is, he's been, he's human, but he's got new powers that, um, he's faster. He's kind of like how Wesker was in some of the other movies. He's faster, better reflexes, stuff like that, and stronger. Um, but at one point in the movie, they actually, it's, so, I don't, <laughs> this movie's just frustrating me so much. So, Alice does not have the T-Virus in her. She no longer has those powers. Um... But at one point in the movie, when she first gets down there and sees that Isaac's still alive, he's got the antivirus. Antivirus. And he basically tells her, drop her weapons, or I'm going to drop it, this is the only vial, blah, blah, blah. Um, but at one point, when she walks toward him, she, like, does this weird, like, I don't know, like, cyborg analyst, and analyzes three different ways she could kill him. And you see all three scenes. It's very over-the-top and very pointless. But then you see that Isaac is with, because he's got like optical nerve, I don't know. He lets her know that none of those three ways are going to happen. Up, you know, she won't be able to do any of those. That he analyzes all of them and finds out 100% probability that he can kill her in those situations. But it's like, it's like a five minute scene. It's way too drawn out. It would have been cool if they did it like once or twice, but it was way too drawn out, way too pointless for that situation in the movie. But so we get down there, and it's just. So, and then you find out, let me show you this, you find out, I forgot to even tell you this, you find out that Alice, this Alice that we've watched for the past six movies, counting this one, is not the real Alice. You find out that, does it show, yeah, this, Alicia Marcia, Mar Marcus, is the first Alice. You find out this right here is the Red Queen. This is the woman that the virus was made for to help her cure her aging and it had side effects obviously it did not work she's supposed to be like 20 here but she looks like she's 90 or whatever so you find out that this entire time we've been you know hoping watching this character it's not even the real alice it is a clone of the red queen now that just screws everything up anyways because like i said before originally the red queen was ag what was her name uh Angie Astra, that was the original Red Queen. That's who the virus was made for in the first, in the second movie at least. So now you find out that, of course, Alice has a weird moment, like she doesn't believe it, you know. Um, and uh, the Alicia girl comes out, or woman, whatever, comes out in a wheelchair and tells her it's truth, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's a touching moment where she says, but you're, you're the real one, you're the only one that could ever do this kind of stuff, all this dumb bullshit. Um, but you find out that she has, this girl has 50%, owns 50% of the umbrella. Um, and the whole thing was the Red Queen could not harm a employee of the, of the Umbrella Corporation. So this is, this is probably the scene that pisses me, off, pisses me off the most. So she tells, uh, Wesker that he's fired, which in turn make, allows the Red Queen to harm him. So she closes a door on his leg. Now, granted, I'm sure that'll hurt like hell, 
But if you see in the original ones, he's ex he's survived guns to shot to the head, um, explosions, and all this shit. But somehow he dies <laughs> from getting a fucking door slammed on his leg. Now I know the whole thing of him. He has to regenerate. So like, if you got if he if you've done something to him and hurt him, can't regenerate. He's not gonna be able to function properly. I understand that. But the entire time he's laying there, and the, the, the movie just forgets about him. And it keeps going on. But he's laying there. And um, he looks over at this uh, older version of Elise, and he's like, "Help me!" And she's like, "No, it's okay. You're just dying." Like really bad dialogue, anyways. But all I know is why the hell did he not just rip his fucking foot or leg out from that shit, and it'll heal? But no, he just lays there and dies. And Alice gives him an explosion, a bomb he has to hold, and if he lets go of it, it you know, blows up the building. Um. But it's just so stupid. It makes no sense. They made a character that was really awesome, in my opinion. I really liked Wesker in this movie. and made him a complete bitch in this movie. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous. So, and then there's a scene... I don't know, probably won't be in here. Um, but, so, basically, the boss battle scene is right here. This right here is the boss battle scene. Um, he comes in there and they fight. In the little laser room. First off, I don't know why they're obsessed with this laser room. They've showed it in so many of these movies. But <coughs> they don't even do the big one everyone so always thought was so cool. Was the one where it starts like this, it turns into the squares, and there's no escaping it. Basically, the one that kills um, the first guy in the first movie. So they don't even do that for one. And then secondly, um, so they they're doing this boss battle scene. He's kicking Alice's ass because, like I said, he's got he's stronger, he's faster, you know. Well, at one point, I don't know why he's, he wanted to do this. He holds her hand up and wants to cut it on one of the, the lasers, right? All right. Well, whenever he wasn't paying attention, she has a grenade and puts it in his pocket while he wasn't looking. So she gets her fingers cut off, whatever. And she starts laughing. He looks down. There's a grenade in there. All right. Well, <laughs> when it blows up, it only blows up that side of him. So that's what I was talking about here with this big stupid explosion at the first of it. This right here, which was a landmine. None of it makes sense. This is a massive ass explosion, but then the grenade literally just covers that one side of him. And, which is whatever, I don't, I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but then I want to point out that Isaac has the antivirus in his pocket on the opposite side. So she's blowing him up, taking a chance that technically that should explode, kill him, and blew him up into pieces, and also blew that virus up. But it's it's just stuff like that. Like it doesn't make any sense. It's like they didn't think about the next scene to the next scene about what should happen and how it should happen. Um, so you get to the end of the movie, uh, and she gets she gets the T or the antivirus. She gets it outside, and the whole point is supposed to be that you know when she lets this go, it could possibly kill her too because she. Is part of the T virus she had in her bloodstream, you know, whatever. So you get out there, and then somehow the fucking Isaac guy lived, which really makes no sense to me because he's still human, even with he's got these special abilities. I think he's supposed to still be human. And uh, he's about to kill her, and he grabs the T virus. Well, then you see um, the other Isaac, the clone, or supposed clone, at least. This one right here, you see him. And he's brought a big massive horde of zombies to the hive to take out Alice. And the real version of him, you know, tells him he's cloned. Well, he freaks out. Like I said, he's all, he's supposed to be all religious in this movie. He, that's the only reason he did this. At least this version. I don't know if the other one's like that too. So he freaks out and stabs the real one, saying the vomit, telling him abomination and kills him. So at this point, Alice grabs the T-virus, or the antivirus. I don't know why I keep calling it T-virus. And the clone Isaac gets attacked by all these zombies. And that's basically how it ends. She drops the virus. Um, she falls down. You think she dies. And then she wakes up later. Claire wakes her up. And tells her she did it. Blah, blah, blah. And, and then uh, it goes on to like, the, after that, you know. And Okay, here's another thing I forgot to mention. So when she drops this, this vial, um, the cure... Like, she's about to die. There's millions of zombies chasing after her. These zombies just do, like, a fucking crowd wave. <laughs> and just all fall, like, perfectly synced with each other. 
as they're coming towards her. Which makes no fucking sense. It's just so ridiculous that they're going to fall like that. I mean, in coordination and just right after the other and stuff like that. It's literally like a wave of people, it looks like. But, <laughs> but anyway, so after all that happens, you see her riding off on that uh, the BMW umbrella motorcycle you see in the first in some of the trailers. And she says, you know, that uh, her fight is not over yet because supposedly this airborne virus... Um, could take years and years to reach the end of the earth because it's being carried by the wind uh, which seems kind of kind of odd to me anyways but so she says her her fight's not over which is pretty fucking stupid because I don't see why it's not over because she's driving off away I don't understand why you wouldn't stay there in the hive or around the hive and at that point anything that comes towards you is going to die that's where it all started at so if it is carried by the wind it's going to stay there so just fucking stay there and as the zombies come they'll die but no she's got to keep going off and <laughs> there's two flying fucking dragons chasing after her at the end of the movie and she says you know my name is Alice and my story's not over yet which really pisses me off because I'm assuming that means they're going to be a sequel which there better not fucking be a sequel because this movie is called the final chapter all right if they make a sequel again after this, I'm going to be pissed. Now, I would love to have a reboot of this movie. A reboot would be amazing. I would love that. But I do not want a sequel. Like, I was so pissed when I found out that Leon wasn't in this, Valentine wasn't in this, the only person that was really in this from the games was Wesker, and they made him a fucking bitch in this for some reason. I don't know why. But he really was just fucking horrible. It's just so disappointing, this movie. Like, I knew it wasn't going to be, be the best. Um, none of these movies have ever been really that great. The best one would probably been the first and second one. They were, still weren't great. They were maybe fives on a scale of five to ten. Five out of ten. But I was really hoping, since this was going to be the final one, they would really try their best to make it a good ending, make it all connect and make sense. But they didn't do that. None of it connects. Most of it makes no fucking sense how anything could happen or how, like, they just changed the origin of everything, of the way the virus started, the Red Queen, the fact that Alice isn't really even a human, she's just a clone. They just changed everything and they fucked it up so bad, which really sucks because I love Resident Evil, the games, and I just want these movies to be good. Like, I would love for them to make a reboot and actually do an awesome story that connects with the games like and I don't even care what game I don't care if it's for, you know the first one or even the newest one seven biohazard I don't care I just want them to have some connection to the games besides just the name and the company umbrella but so in my opinion I would only rate this movie like a two or a three out of ten now I know that sounds horrible and Neela is a great actor like I mean I, the Fifth Element's one of my favorite movies, and she did amazing in that. And she's been in a lot of other movies that were amazing, and they just—I don't understand why people's like why would people in this movie be all right with the way they ended this? Like, if I was her, I would be pissed. Like, I would, like, I wouldn't want it to end like this. Basically, is what I'm saying. But she's been in so many good movies besides. <laughs> Resident Evil that is just ridiculous like look at all these I mean you got some stupid like Zoolander and stuff, but she's got some great movies here The fourth kind was an awesome movie. I mean ultraviolet was pretty good and it's just I, I don't know <laughs> uh, Days and confused of course, but but yeah, so that's my rating for this movie and that is my pissed off review I guess you could say um, Don't waste your money to go see it just wait for it to come out on DVD. I don't even know if it'd be worth to even buy it on DVD. I'd probably just wait till it comes out on Redbox or something and rent it. But just don't waste the however much it is at your theater to watch this movie. It's not worth it. There's going to be a lot better movies coming out this year that's worth your money more than Resident Evil The Final Chapter. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I apologize. The movie was so horrible. But what can you do? Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later. <laughs>